Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm planning with this kit from Saucy Stickers Co. called Soft Nightmare. We've got the deco sheet. I am pulling in this little freebie from Panda Bird Design that has some spider webs and other cool stuff on it. Um, we've got the full boxes here. This kit is in silver foil. Um, pretty spooky, nice Edgar Allan quote, Poe quote in the middle. We've got our date covers, uh, our washi and habit trackers and meal trackers and our full and half boxes. So let's get into it. Uh, I know it's Halloween, so uh, happy Halloween to everyone. Uh, I thought I would do another get to know you uh, type video. So um, yeah, hope you all are having a fantastic Halloween. Uh, so I'm working my list down this uh, list that's like 20, 250 rather not boring questions to help you get to know someone. So the first one is, do you have any pet peeves? And yes, of course, I think everyone has pet peeves. Um, a pet peeve of mine is when people don't listen carefully at all and then ask me to repeat myself. That is a huge pet peeve of mine. I don't know what it is that makes that a pet peeve, but you know, I go through so many situations at work mostly, I wouldn't say in my personal life so much, but at work where I'm running a meeting, someone's in the meeting, they're clearly not paying attention, and I'm like, this person is gonna ask me to repeat something. And you know, I say, hey, is everyone, you know, listening? Like, hey everyone, like, do you have everything that I said? Do you, do you need me to go over anything? And they're like, no. And then I'll end the meeting and like five minutes later or later that day, they'll be like, hey, what did you say about blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, I know that you were not listening. You're asking me to repeat myself because you're not listening. More often it happens that I've said something and the person will ask me to repeat what I just said and not because like they didn't hear me, but because they like totally did not listen. So I just hate repeating myself. That's a pet peeve of mine. Um, the kind of opposite of this uh, question is once one thing that can instantly make your day better and really it's kind of uh, I would say maybe an Easter egg or how I don't know how to really describe it but my boyfriend likes to make me laugh which I really appreciate it and he does this by hiding a lot of like funny surprises or nice surprises in places so um, I will lay out like a little notepad and say, hey, write down what you need from the grocery store. I'm going on Monday or Tuesday or whatever, and let me know what you need. And so instead of writing things down, what he'll do is like stack things that he needs on top of the list. <laughs> so the other day he put like an empty floss roll, like a bottle, an empty bottle of juice, just like... <laughs> I'm laughing even thinking about it but it's like instead of writing it down he'll just stack things so when I finally get around to this the, this kitchen counter where um, I have a little like island type thing in my kitchen um, when I get around to the counter and I look at the list it's just things like stacked on top of the list and it makes me laugh it's really funny another thing that he does is um, so I love sparkling water and um, in California where I live, Chapo Chico is super popular as a brand of, of sparkling water. So sometimes um, he'll go and get some sparkling water and then just like hide a couple bottles in my, in my bag so that when I'm leaving um, to either go and get coffee or something or um, just leaving his place to go back over to mine, uh, I will take a look at my bag and I'm like, oh my gosh, like Chapo Chico, I'm super excited. Sometimes he even leaves, leaves a little note that's like, hope you have a good day, love you. It's just like, oh, that just instantly makes my day better. So that is one thing that can make my day better. Which meal is your favorite? Breakfast, lunch, or dinner? I am really a breakfast person. I love breakfast. I am a big fan also of breakfast for dinner. I know some people consider that sacrilege, but I love it. Uh, my favorite breakfast foods, foods, but food specifically has got to be waffles. I'm a waffle person. Whenever I uh, travel, back in the days, you know, when we traveled a lot pre-COVID, um, I used to have to travel a lot for work outside of the country, especially. I would always look at which hotel had waffles on their breakfast menu. And that honestly would be like a huge factor in picking that hotel. 
hotel waffles are different than waffles you can just get, you know, any plain old time and that like, they are usually bigger. And my favorite thing to eat for, for breakfast, which, you know, now that I think about it, it's actually kind of a little bit, I'm making it like a dessert waffle, but I don't care, is a waffle with whipped cream and if they have it, some chocolate chips. Either you can sprinkle them on top or bake them in the waffle. So waffles, love them. Aside from waffles, as you all know, because you, you know, watching my videos and seeing my planner, I do like going to Starbucks. Um, their breakfast sandwiches, I think, are pretty good. The one that I usually get, the ones that I usually get are either the turkey bacon, the reduced fat turkey bacon, or the bacon and gouda. Um, I'm trying not to eat a ton of pork, so uh, I usually peel off the bacon strips <laughs> and just eat the cheese and the egg. I know, it sounds weird, but it's still delicious. Um, and I usually get a, a strawberry or mango dragon fruit refresher. Um, I'm pretty sensitive to caffeine, so I uh, only really drink tea um, and hardly ever coffee, like very rarely. So that's kind of like a cool, kind of refreshing tea in the morning. It really is juice in an egg sandwich, if I'm, you know, I'm not kid if I'm if I don't kid myself on that, it's it's juice and an egg sandwich. But I love breakfast. Give me a waffle, give me a breakfast sandwich, give me juice, whether it's the refreshers or orange juice, scrambled eggs. I just I'm a breakfast person. Um when you were a kid, did you eat the crust on your sandwich or not? Yes, actually. I don't mind crusts. I actually really like, a, you know, as an adult, a hard crusty bread. I just, there's something about it that's nice for like dipping and things, like soups and such. Um, I didn't discover actually until, so I went to college in North Carolina and people there used to call the like ends of the bread the heel. I just called it the end, but they used to call it the heel and they're like, oh, you eat the heel of the bread? I'm like, yeah. Growing up, my mother and I, I think we're the only ones that used to like to eat the like ends of the bread. It, I didn't. It didn't bother me. It was kind of like it's bread, you know? The crusts, I think, crusts are fine. I don't mind eating the crusts. Um, sometimes I will even do this diabolically weird thing where I eat the crust of my pizza first. Because to me, it's like pizza crusts, you know, they're kind of not a fun part. And like, you want to get to the rest of the pizza. So I kind of like get the not fun part out of the way first and then eat the rest of the pizza. But yeah, that's something I do in my house where I don't let other people see me because I know it's super weird. Um, what activity instantly calms you? This is kind of similar to the thing that instantly makes my day better. But, you know, oddly enough, I think it's planning or sticker organization is like so instantly calming for me. So I've been working on consolidating my stickers into one kind of big sticker book. So I used to keep all these sheets in like plastic sleeves in a binder. And it was really getting hard to kind of transport it back from my apartment to my boyfriend's apartment or when I travel, because yes, I do bring my planner stuff when I when I travel to see my, my mother or my sister or my father. Um, so I'm like, how can I consolidate this so it's easier to just carry these things? So I kind of just throw it in my backpack. So I bought a uh, reusable sticker book, a large one, that's like eight and a half by 11 inches. And I've basically been moving all of the stickers that are on those sheets into this large book. And it's kind of tedious work because you're picking up the stickers with tweezers, often one by one. Some of them I can easily kind of peel off the sheet, but some of them you really have to pick up one by one, especially if they're smaller stickers. And that's just a really kind of zen activity for me. I can pretty much sit down and do that for like a couple hours and just really zone out, get into a flow state, and it's really calming. It's just nice, I think, to like have a kind of rote task where you keep your hands busy and it requires some thought because I'm trying to figure out how do I organize these in a way where like items are together. So for example, I have like all my fall stickers together, all my winter stickers together, things that are like specific to the season that I wouldn't use in another season, like snowflakes or for summer, like bathing suit stickers and stuff like that. Um, so it's enough kind of mental stimulation that I don't feel totally bored, but it's not so taxing that I don't feel like I really am thinking really hard about it. So I'd say that. And then of course planning, just regular planning, I would say, um, anything where I can do it and I don't feel the urge to kind of check my phone every five seconds. 
um, is something that is super calming to me. When I do my nails, I sometimes like in between dryings, I pick up my phone and then inevitably I'll peek at work or something like that. And then I'm like, oh, I'm super stressed. But with the um, stickering, <laughs> sticker organization and planning, my hands are busy. So I can't pick up my phone. So yeah, I also think walks are an activity that instantly calms me. I try to go for walks, uh, you know, three or four times a week on top of my regular exercise schedule because one, vitamin D is good to, to have these days, we all know. Um, and then two, it's just nice to be out in nature and to like feel the wind, you know, on your face and feel the sun. Uh, I'm working remotely. I know some people are back in the office, some people not. And so, you know, if I don't force myself, uh, especially because I have a Peloton, like I don't need to go outside really for a lot of things, you know? So getting a walk-in is like, an excuse to go outside. It's also like super, again, relaxing. I'm lucky enough to have a lot of sidewalks in my neighborhood, so yeah. Um, this is a question that I'll ask, uh, that I'll answer from pre-pandemic. It's on here, but what do you do in your commute to and from work? So I just said I'm working remotely, so I don't really commute. Um, but when I used to commute to work, uh, I've had commutes of varying lengths over the years. When I first moved to California, my commute was like an hour and a half in the mornings. It was rough. Um, especially I think because I couldn't drive in the HOV lane, it was just me, so that was brutal. But when my commute was that long, I would often listen to um, podcasts or audiobooks on the radio. Um, and well, not on the radio, on my phone, uh, but I would get through a lot of books really quickly because I mean, an hour and a half of an audiobook, like you can get through a lot. Um, so, uh, when I switched jobs, not to the job that I have now, but the job right before it, um, I had to commute about 20 minutes and I would probably, uh, I think I would only listen to music then. It wasn't really enough time to get into anything. But it was enough time to, you know, kind of jam out on the um, on music and just like de-stress um, on the way to work or uh, on the way home from work. Um, and on the way to work, I'm like just trying to get in a kind of mindset of like, OK, you're going into work. You know, I used to when I would go when I would go to work, sometimes it's 20 minutes would actually be more like 15 minutes, depending on if there was absolutely no traffic and if I was going a little bit fast and I would get to work and I'm like, I'm not ready to go in. So I just go around the block <laughs> and um, come back around. I'm like, nope, I need like five more minutes before I can go in. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm sure a lot of people do that, but there were some mornings where I was like, I'm just not ready to do that. So yeah, um, I'll put the questions in the description and I would love to hear you know, what y'all's answers are for some of these. We're coming to the end of the spread. Hope you've enjoyed this kind of Halloween themed plan with me. Um, yeah, and if you have any questions about the stickers, feel free to uh, comment below. Uh, if this is your first time, thanks for joining. Feel free to click like and subscribe and I will see you all next time. Bye.